This is your evening news update for Tuesday, March 22. So glad you could join us. Officials today rolled out the details of Crop Over 2022. The Sweet Summer Festival comes with a number of changes, which Minister in the Prime Minister's office, Dr. Chantal Munro Knight says, takes into consideration the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic. She stresses that the festival will be safe with much to enjoy. So first, I do want to announce that we will be having a pick of the crop finals. And I'm sure that that is good news um, for many. Good news for me, I'm a, I'm a Calypso baby. Uh, so I'm very, very happy to be able to announce that we will be having a pick of the crop finals. We will be having a people's choice Soka Monarch that will end in a showcase at Botanical Gardens. So that is modified, yeah? We will also be hosting a Junior Calypso Monarch, but again, with a modification. It will now be community-based, and at the end, as I indicated, in a competition of a Junior Calypso Monarch. We will not this year, unfortunately, be having a Kiddies Kadumant Band or a or, or parade. However, we will seek to ensure that that craft is not left um, unattended by ensuring that we build out in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Technological and Vocational um, Training a program where we seek to develop that art within the schools. Revelers will now have more options to parade on Kadumat Day, and there will be more routes for four-day morning. Chief Cultural Officer of the National Cultural Foundation, Andrea Wells, outlined the details. And that we would separate the parade route into four different options and uh, manage them according to the numbers who register for each early. So it's going to be based on a matter of choice, a choice of the bands, up to a limit. All right? The first route would be from Searles, beginning at Searles and ending at Ball Park. The next route would be Bushy Park route, around Bushy Park. It's quite a bit of space there. The next route would be Botanical Gardens. And the next route would be a northern one from for, departing from Farley Hill and going all the way to Checker Hall. Right? The idea behind this is wherever possible to make sure that the masqueraders are not passing through heavily, heavily, heavily um, residential areas, but also that the, the parade itself is divided into four bubbles, so collectively less persons at any one site. For Grand Kadumat, there are two different routes being um, put on the table. Again, registered bands would be able to identify which they prefer based, again, on the time that they register. So there's going to be a first come, first serve, as is always. Um, <clears throat> starting at Warrens, with the Warrens being the assembly point, parading on the ABC Highway up to the Norman Niles roundabout, turning at Norman Niles roundabout, returning down the highway, exiting at Waterford and towards the Botanical Gardens. Yeah, there you'd come down water, Waterford, turn as if you were going to Combermere and entering Botanical Gardens via the entrance that directly opposite the Combermere School. Okay. Um, the next option would be Bushy Park. In news from the Senate, Independent Senator Andrew Malalu today raised concerns about the new pandemic contribution levy. In his contribution to debate on the appropriation bill, he suggested the narrow application of the levy makes it inequitable. The pandemic levy will be applied at a rate of 15% of the net income of companies in the telecommunications and commercial banking sectors, the retail sale of petroleum products, and general and life insurance industry that have a net income above $5 million in 2020 and 2021. This pandemic levy, it does not address this fact that was there. It singles out a few particular industries, a few particular, in fact, a few particular players in one industry. That does not seem fair uh, to me. I would have preferred that we were all in this together. And it is clear that if you have made profit, you could afford to pay some more tax. And I think, personally, 
that all the businesses should have been asked to play uh, a part, not just some in certain industries that we might think have w w avoided the worst of it because we frankly did not know who benefited, who was resilient enough, etc. So I support completely the notion of a pandemic levy that would get us to pay back what it cost us during that period in the quickest possible time so that we do not leave this pandemic as a legacy for generations to come, but we deal with it now. And in that way, I believe the proposal is correct, but I believe the proposal is unfair in addressing only certain industries and certain players within those industries. Government Senator Elizabeth Thompson has expressed her disappointment that the constitutional amendment to lower the age of eligibility for the Senate from 21 to 18 was unsuccessful. She told the upper chamber it was a missed opportunity to give the nation's youth a voice in the decision-making process. It is regrettable, sir, that there are persons who, within recent times, when the matter came before this chamber, did not see the value of having a youth voice in this chamber, did not think that a young person could, uh, could contribute to the broadening of the democracy and the inclusion of a youth perspective in the national discourse, and did not think that value was to be found in hearing that perspective on the formulation of policy and on issues which are affecting them now and which are going to shape their future. And I hope that with sober reflection over time, a majority of us will come to see that this was not about a single individual with a particular name. It was opening a space for use in the broadening of our democratic process that allowed us to say to them, you are important. This is no longer the era of being seen and not heard. We see you. We are creating space for you to be seen. And we want to hear what you have to say to us because your perspective is important and you are our future and we honor that future by giving you a seat in this sacred place it was never about a single individual and now for today's COVID-19 update, the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 103 new COVID-19 cases, 42 males and 61 females, from the 938 tests conducted on Monday. Of the positive cases, 16 persons were under the age of 18 and 87 were 18 years and older. There were 47 people in isolation facilities, while 860 were in home isolation. The death toll stands at 329. There's regional and international news after this short break. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional news in Jamaica, the Advocates Network today staged a demonstration at the British High Commission in Kingston calling for an apology from the British monarchy and reparations for slavery. The action came just mere hours before the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge arrived at the Norman Manley International Airport. The crowd has grown. They started somewhere about 10.30 and from that the crowd has just been growing. The police have been here from before 10 o'clock because I came about around that time. And we have Jarari is here. He is the. You are, remind us who you are again, sir. I'm the vice president of the UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, founded by Marcus Mosiah Garvey in 1914. Tell us why do you think it was important for you to be here this morning? It was terribly important for us to be here, all of us, and we wish more could be here, because we are representing a principle that will not go away until the British 
uh, people have taken recognition of the need to give us reparation and until our leaders recognize that we don't need to be associated in any colonial manner to the British government or the Queen of England. That's why I'm here, sir, to show the world and to help, help my brothers and sisters who are here demonstrating the fact that we need to sever all colonial ties with Britain and all oppressive countries on earth. You said something about apology earlier this morning. Yes, apology is important, but apology without reparation is garbage. So if you want to do something good, dump the apology and give me some reparations. And I don't mean give me a, a, a ton load of money. I mean fix up my country, fix up the other countries in the world. Schools, hospitals, roads, children who are underprivileged can't go to school. Feed them. Children who can't dress themselves. Close. On the international front, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Liberal minority government has reached a deal with the New Democratic Party to stay in power until 2025. In exchange, the Liberals will support the left-leaning NDP on several of the party's key priorities in Parliament. What this means is that during this uncertain time, the government can function with predictability and stability, present and implement budgets, and get things done for Canadians. I've thought long and hard about this. It was not an easy decision. With so much instability around us, Canadians need stability. We're different political parties. We stand for different things. But where we have common goals, we cannot let our differences stand in the way of delivering what Canadians deserve. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.